Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and I'm glad that you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is the time where we gather uh, each each uh, weekday, Monday through Thursday, to uh, to uh, read some scripture together, to pray over the scripture, and then uh, to to hear some of my reflections on the text for the day. Um, if you happen to be joining us live or throughout the day, drop us a line in the comment box. Uh, that way, we we know that you're out there. And if this particular video speaks to you in a in a in a in a good way, I invite you to hit the like and share button, and uh, also drop your 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 comments there in the comment box. I see uh, Dick and Nancy and Karen are joining us this morning. Good morning. Glad y'all are y'all are up and and moving around on this. Uh, kind of rainy dreary thursday morning it's uh at least it's warm so it's no snow right uh but we are getting some getting some rain so uh let's go ahead and uh delve into our text we have been using the revised common lectionary for our readings and we've been focusing on one of the psalms all week and this week it is psalm 56 we've been reading it from different translations so uh the one that we're reading it from today is the message, which is a paraphrase of the biblical text. So uh, let's see what this translation holds for us for Psalm 56. Take my side, God. I'm getting kicked around, stomped on every day. Not a day goes by, but somebody beats me up. They make it their duty to beat me up. When I'm really afraid, I come to you in trust. I'm proud to praise God. Fearless now, I trust in God. What can mere mortals do? They don't let up. They smear my reputation and huddle to plot my collapse. They gang up, sneak together through the alleys to take me by a surprise, wait their chance to get me. Pay them back in evil. Get angry, God. Down with these people. You've kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear entered your ledger, each ache written in your book. If my enemies run away, turn tail when I yell at them, then I'll know that God is on my side. I'm proud to praise God proud to praise God. Fearless now, I trust in God. What can mere mortals do to me? God, you did everything you promised, and I am thanking you with, my, with all my heart. You pulled me from the brink of death, made my feet the cliff edge of doom. Now I stroll at leisure with God in the sunlit fields of life. Well, that is definitely a different translation than we've been reading, and uh, it's kind of nice, you know, kind of nice. So uh, our next reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, and we're looking at chapter 9, verses 19 through 25. And uh, this morning I'm reading from the Common English Bible. He stayed with his disciples in Damascus for several days. Right away, he began to preach about Jesus and the synagogues. He is God's son, he declared. Everyone who heard him was baffled. They questioned each other. Isn't he the one who was wreaking havoc among those in Jerusalem who called on his name? Hadn't he come here to take these same people as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul grew stronger and stronger. He confused the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. After this had gone on for some time, the Jews hatched a plot to kill Saul. However, he found out their scheme. They were keeping watch at the city gates around the clock so that he so that they could assassinate him but his disciples took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the city wall 
Friends, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning, Loretta and Martha and Mom. Glad to see you guys are joining us this morning. So uh, let's spend a few minutes in uh, prayerful reflection uh, on the text. And as we do, I'll invite you to, to focus on this line from the psalm. Fearless now, I trust in God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Fearless now, I trust in God. 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 Well, amen, amen, and amen. I hope that was a good prayer time for you. So we are using the Wesley Study Bible for our notes. And uh, the ones for uh, this particular section um, of Acts chapter 9 read this way. The former prosecutor promptly becomes the pers persecuted one. The amazed questions reiterate Saul's reputation and confirm his transformation. Saul's increasing power corresponds with the effectiveness of the apostles' message. However, the perplexity of the Jewish people also suggests a mixed response of belief and rejection. The plot to kill Saul reflects earlier hostilities in Jerusalem. However, in 2 Corinthians, Paul blames King Aretas for this plot. So, uh, it's pretty good notes this morning. You know, this, uh, the text from today is following that famous story of Saul's conversion on the road to Damascus. And I'm sure you guys all remember that, that, that Saul was persecuting the early Christians 
and he was met by Jesus on the road to Damascus and was made blind for three days. And then Ananias comes to him after God calls to Ananias and tells him to go to Saul and scale-like things fall from Saul's eyes and he stays with the disciples. And that's what we were reading in the, and that's where our story picks up today. And, you know, I, I really liked how the psalm reading today kind of ties in with our, with, our, um, with, our, with our other reading from Acts. Because of the, the focus line that, that I picked up on in Acts was, Fearless now, I trust in God. And this is what Paul was experiencing. After his conversion on the road to Damascus, he was now fearless and trusting wholeheartedly in God to take care of him. Now, the, the, there's an interesting note here. This little period of time in this text actually probably happened over three years. And that's why the fellow, the believers that were following, that were listening to Paul, were so willing to help him escape by lowering him out of the you know, lowering him out of the window in, uh, from the, for, so that he could escape. And, you know, that reminded me of another story where somebody was lowered out of a window to, be, to, to escape. And those were the spies that went into the promised land and how they were lowered out of a window also to escape persecu- persecution. So it's just kind of interesting how the, the Psalms and the text from Acts and the stories from the Old Testament all kind of meld together uh, with an over, overarching uh, telling of the gospel story. And I just find that fascinating. So, you know, those, those are just some my reflections uh, today. And it's always fun to, to try to make those connections. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on where you see connections from the Old Testament text to the New Testament text and the parallels and the, the prophecy and how when we look at the Old Testament through the lens of Jesus, how it brings a deeper understanding to that particular text. Well, friends, I, uh, I hope you are staying safe today. It's kind of, it's just gonna, it looks like it's going to be one of those nasty rainy days for the next couple of days. Um, but at least it's not snow and it's not ice and it's warm. And uh, we can stay inside and, and uh, do those inside things that we've probably been putting off for a little bit. Well, this is our last day together this week. I hope that you will join us uh, on Sunday, either at 8 o'clock here on Facebook for uh, a live uh, sermon, uh, live, live worship service, or join us at Rousey's Chapel at 9.30 or Beaver Dam uh, here, here at 11. But uh, let's go ahead and get ready to take on the day. And before we do, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rains. We thank you that they come and nourish the ground because we know that spring is right around the corner and we will start to see spurts of new growth, new growth that tells us of your faithfulness. God, we just thank you for the gift of the Holy Scriptures and how they guide and inspire us. Uh, to to learn more to learn more about you and to learn more about ourselves. God, we ask that you continue to wrap your loving arms around all of those who need to feel your presence. Those who are sick, those who are facing uh, physical challenges, those who are facing mental challenges, and those of us who uh, just want to rest in your presence. God, help us slow down. Help us to slow down so that we can focus on our relationship with you. Guide us to spend time in prayer. And let us feel your presence. Let let us feel the Holy Spirit active in, in our lives. And allow us to see those places where you are moving. 
that sometimes we are blind to everything that's around us because we get so focused. We get so focused on things of the world. But we need to learn to shift our focus from those things to our faith in you, to growing closer to you, to learning more about you, and to loving our neighbor more. God, we just, uh, we ask that you continually, continually just guide and inspire us. And we ask for all of these things in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.